Hello, Oji. I hope you remember me. <laughs> I met Oji when I was a uh, 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 young designer that time, in the late 70s. And um, I, I thought I was very lucky and had a lot of good opportunities, especially when I was, when I had the chance to be part of the fashion councils, namely FDCP, Fashion Designers Council of the Philippines, and then we had FDG, where in OG is one of the major organizers, but I think OG should be remembered not just today, but as one of our uh, icon designers and part of our heritage in our fashion design history. Oji has, I think, is a very good example of practicing work ethics, which I think should be remembered. Uh, we, most of us have our talent, most of us can be successful. But I remember Oji for his being very ethical. And I think that's very important. No? Um, many have made it, but Oji did it the right way, not just through his design talent, not just through the technical skills that he truly is knowledgeable about, but his relationship with friends, clients, and to, to our community. Oji has set a very good example for us. Uh, thank you, Oji. I hope you'll continue to inspire us. Oji is one of the very few people who changed the course of my life. I met Oji the summer I graduated from high school in Where Else Disco. He said he was preparing for a lunchtime fashion show at the Hyatt Hotel. He asked if I would like to join. At that point in my life, fashion was not on my radar. But it was summer vacation. I didn't have much to do and it sounded interesting. The rest is history. I am double blessed to have a wonder, my wonderful mom, and Oji, who is referred to as my fashion mother. Oji, Oji had great, two great passions, which were fashion and Hollywood. He would go on and on describing his favorite scenes of breakfast at Tiffany, or whatever movie he was into at the moment in minute detail. He had this meticulous attention to details, the fabric, color cut, stitching, zippers, buttons, beads, lace, pearls, pillbox hats, feathers, feather boas, and on and on. He said it was all the details that make the dress or the picture. Being with him awakened my own appreciation of details. Although physically not present, he was there. He was there in his beautiful creations. He was there in so many happy and important moments of my life. At my wedding, baptisms, anniversaries, special events, so many parties, even my daughter's first Holy Communion. He was there. He was there making these special moments even brighter, prettier, and more memorable. Oji lives on, not just in the photos or photo albums, but in so many cherished memories woven into the fabric of my life. Oji, I would like to tell you that knowing you has made my life that much fuller. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I actually don't even remember how I met Oji. But I certainly remember I was a senior high school student in STC Manila. I was just 17 years old, and that was about almost 50 years ago. I started out as his model for fashion photo shoots with Marilene Ojeda. Then one day, I got a call from Ch Tita Chito Madrigal because I got my first serious offer to model at La Concha, and my designer was Ochi Cordero. In those days, we modeled for the experience exposure, and learning to be graceful. I don't know why I did what I did, but I enjoyed modeling and performing to the, for the public. When OG learned, from OG, I learned to project class. He didn't really teach me, 
but wearing his clothes in that great Gatsby look gave me that feeling. One day after a photo shoot, he told me he was, a, he was requested by a sponsor to ask me if I could join the Bini Bini Filipinas pageant. I never dreamt of being a beauty contestant, and I was too scared to ask my parents. As expected, they did not give their consent. He was so disappointed. The following year, OG asked again. By that time, I was dancing in major productions. I was polished and more mature at 19. As luck would have it, my parents were on holiday in remote Tagum, Davao del Norte. Communication was non-existing during that pre-cell phone era. So I asked my grandmother, a carnival queen, for her consent as guardian. OG was so thrilled when I told him I was in. You all know that not only did I win, but so did his other models, Marilene Ojeda and Marimi Del Fuente. If it was a horse race, it would have been a win for OG in a trifecta bet. Someone once asked me, what was OG's advice after winning the local contest? He said, get yourself tanned. <laughs> I was too mestiza. So he gave me the formula. I mixed Coca-Cola and baby oil. Baby oil. <laughs> but I had to fly, flap all the, the flies coming towards me. <laughs> OG did, not, did my wardrobe at the Miss Universe 1973 pageant in Athens, and I won wearing his now famous white gown with a garbage, garbage rose on the shoulder. He also did my wedding gown in secrecy because I eloped. And he did a few Filipiniana outfits for me some years ago. Well, OG, enjoy your voyage, my gentle soul. You were part of what I was, and I certainly became the better of it. Thank you. Thanks, Alia. Um, thanks to the organizers today. I'm, you're honoring OG the way he would have wanted it, very low-key and classy and surrounded by people he loved. Thanks, Rina. Thanks, Thelma. Thanks, Jackie. The best gift OG gave me was time. The moment I enter OG's atelier, time stands still. OG gave me all the time in the world. I never felt hurried. Time is a gift he freely shared. He made me feel seen and heard. He was the best therapist. It was never gossip that filled our time together. Back in the day, there were no online editions, and he would subscribe to publications, most of which were never available here. He would share these discoveries. I've spent time at his atelier just browsing through his world. In fact, just seeing the magazines and newspapers on his desk was magical. And when he would talk about something he read or watched, his face would light up. I miss that look, plus his signature throaty laugh and a very mahinhin giggle that was so endearing. Oji was always on top of his craft, a visionary, a league of his own. He was never competitive. Learning something new was effortless for him because he enjoyed it. He always interpreted global trends for the Philippine context. He always wanted to create and innovate to put Philippine fashion on the global stage. There was never really a business relationship with his clients. They were simply friends. He was so turned off by, the, by ideas like that. He never wanted his friends to feel they were objects of profit. He never showed off his client list. I, it's the first time I see so many bridal photos to know who his other clients are. And he never had an agenda. Fashion was never a commercial venture for him. It was a vocation, art for art's sake, for friendship, and for country. I cannot talk about Oji without mentioning Neng. They were indivisible. They instantly made you feel like family. Their tandem completed the home of creativity and dreams, and not to mention all the manangs. You know how others say they, are, they wear their clothes with pride? I would say when I wore an Oji creation, I wore it knowing I was loved by him. Thank you, Oji. Love and miss you. God bless you all. Thank you. Hello. Um, hello. I'm not an Oji bride, okay? So 
I just be. Now, I grew up with Oji around. I accompanied my mom in the 70s to a shop. And uh, what I can tell you is, I was what, maybe 10? The first thing you're going to say is, Mom, the smoke! You know, because he's always smoking. But I don't know how he kept the, all those couches in front immaculately white. Then there, were the, uh, there was a trip to Hong Kong, I kind of also remember. And of course, uh, Oji did attend my college graduation. Him and my mom went over. I want to talk about the safe space that we enjoyed when in conversation of topics other than fashion. See? Now, it was movies that Oji and I had, uh, you know, we clicked on that one. Um, who here has seen the, the classic film, um, The Age of Innocence by Martin Scorsese? All right. Now, that was a three-hour conversation on filmmaking, costume design, societal obligations, and deceit. So that three-hour conversation, I learned a lot about so many things, all because Oji was, in effect, a societal critic. He had that about him. Occasionally, we spoke about the changes in our um, society here in Metro Manila as it went from the 70s to, I would say, the, the, the millennium, the 2000s. Because after that, um, spending time with Oji became less. As with all good friends, there simply was not enough time. But let me say, time with Oji is time well spent. As far as my personal journey and my family's journey, Oji made it better rather than worse. And for that, we thank him. But did he really have to smoke so much? Thank you. Tumuturo na ang luha ko. We started together. No, actually, I had Dok ng one year. Tapos, he was just a student at the University of no, Far Eastern Uni University. Then, he knocked my door one day. Yung pala, every day pala, he passes sa shop ko. Kasi, I was ahead of one year. I had the display window during the time na iniiskat siya at ganagaya niya. That's from his own mouth when we became friends na already. Shopping tayo bukas. Talagang friendly talaga kasi ang bait niya eh. Makikita mo ka agad yung, yung oran niya, yung pagpasok niya sa, sa shop ko. Ano ka agad? Palagay na ka agad yung loob sa kanya. So from that day on, hanggang sa nawala siya, magkaibigan kami. We never quarreled. We argue. Siyempre, parte ng buhay yan, hindi mo mawala, hindi pa. We argue about yung mga laso ko, yung mga cabbage roses namin. Almost the same style then, although mas simple siya, mas avant-garde akong kalokohan. Mas overacting ako eh. Ay, yung mga arte ko, si OJ napaka-simple. At saka, ako hindi ako nababasa ng mga books niya. Wala akong nalaman sa mga books na yun. No? Wala akong nalaman. Mas gusto pa yung mga movies niya, hindi pa. Pero only game movies lang. Ayoko naman straight, straight. Hindi pa? Yung straight sa sinihan, eh. Hindi pa? Pero sa kwarto, mga game movies. This is fun. Hindi pa? Kasi kami hindi rin walang, eh. Hindi pa? So, I consider myself very lucky to become Oji's confidante. Lahat ng tungkol sa buhay niya. He told everything about his life. I'm so happy what happened to his career. I'm so proud and happy. And uh, parang... Hindi ko kalahin magiging ganun siya. It will turn out talagang mataas na mataas na mataas talaga. Mabihis ng mga presidente, makagawa ka ng Miss Universe, makagawa ka ng isang international model. So that's really something. It's an achievement of anybody na bitch ako, wala akong nagawang ganun, hindi ba? Mahal na mahal niya ako. Sobra. Um, incomparable yung marami siya kaibigan pero iba yung level ng pinag-uusapan namin yung personal talaga yung really about family talaga yung talagang kaibigan talaga na walang superficial walang pretension walang nothing like that so that's it OG in one word maybe I can say that perfect friend of mine siya lang ang Sinasabi niya sa akin kung anong ayaw niya sa akin sa pagbibihis ko, sa mga wigs ko, sa ano pa ba. Lahat sinasabi niya. 
Tapos nasagot ko naman sa kanya, inggit ka lang. Kasi mas maganda ako kaysa sa'yo. Ganun lang yun, di ba? So that's OG and me. Kaya tumagal yung friendship namin. Si Neng. And then the rest of the family. Basta ako, I love OG so much. Sobra, pero hindi ako magpapatalo sa'yo. Paraho tayo mahusay. Nauna ka lang, pero magkikita pa rin tayo. Not soon. Magkikita tayo. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I truly miss Oji. I was one of his brides, and from there on, I first modeled for him, but I think it was kind of disastrous because I didn't want to wear heels. <laughs> anyway, from there on, then he made my wedding gown. So I miss you, Oji. <laughs> I'm, uh, good afternoon. So my, a regular sight of me and my brother growing up was like his typical endless telebabble sessions with my mom. So if ever I get the chance to answer the phone at home, my typical um, common would be, Kitoji, you're my fair lady. Uh, actually, kasi he always promised me to give me a my fair lady tape, a Betamax tape, because he was the one who uh, indirectly influenced me to go into fashion. He was the one who, who indirectly, like, I was exposed to Audrey Hepburn, Givenchy. Well, when, during the time that I wasn't even into fashion. So, growing up, watching Audrey Hepburn movies, My Fair Lady specifically, was like just a typical thing for me. And while my classmates were like into video games and typical teenage stuff, I am also drawn to what's happening to the Oscars. This particular desk this particular um, position, this particular side of the desk is where I usually stand when I was growing up. Pag nangungulit ako, he would suddenly say, oh may aso dyan, kasi I would almost go inside his um, workshop. When I accompany my mom driving to his shop, um, I would stand here just um, looking at his magazines while I listen to my mom and Tito Oji talk. And he never really was irritated or anything. Na parang I was like, hinahalongkat ko yung gamit niya. I would just like blunt, blunt out. I would just ask some random stuff, fashion stuff or anything. Then he would just answer it. Then one particular, when one um, memory talaga, I would remember every time we are in the shop, um, when during my mom's fittings with him, and my, and my mom would like, you know, request like a Herculean task na parang, I want this cut or something like that. Tito Oji would like look at me sarcastically and say na parang ilisyonado na naman nanay mo. Gumagana na naman siya. <laughs> so, you know, that's a typical, you know, um, fun memory with Tito Oji. And, um, as I, and I, when I grew up, when I was growing up, um, I didn't see him as a designer. I didn't see him as somebody who discovered a lot of people, a lot of um, beauty queens and all. Tito Oji for me was, well, family. Yeah, of course, I'm really going to miss all of their um, endless dinners that will last till 1 a.m., 2 a.m., especially now that um, things are opening up. I mean, the pan I mean, everything is like, you know, going back to normal. It's one of those things that I'm thinking that it could have been nice na we could have gone. I could have gone. We could have gone again to those dinners at his home in Konshu. Then um, would go to his shop, stand here again, and just watch them. As somebody said, it's their their comfort place. And that this shop and this table is definitely one of a very comfortable place for me. That's one thing I guess I've learned in this growing up in this um in this community um, in where my mom, it's my mom's world, where family doesn't really have to be by blood. And I think Tito Oji is definitely a very, very concrete example that um, he's definitely family, even if we're not related. So there, thank you so much. 
I am actually so honored and privileged to be part of these esteemed women. Um, to catch Oji's eye, wow, I, it's like a dream come true, especially coming, you know, um, after, you know, speaking uh, Menchu Menchaca Soriano and, of course, the Margie Moran Florendo and Ana Baile, to name a few of these, like, really famous women who have paved the way, uh, including me, like uh, a young aspiring model. And now, look at me right now, without um, Oji Cordero, there would be no Joyce Orenia in fashion. Um, uh, it's uh, honestly uh, quite difficult to still process that he's gone. And I feel so bad that I wasn't able to see him personally. We would like uh, message each other in Facebook. Because you know how Oji is. You cannot see him unless you would visit him in his atelier or his home. And I am uh, so glad that he made me part of his world because it's really a rarity. And, you know, growing up in the 80s, nobody could buy all his like, magazines, his books. I mean, the exposure that he brought me into that world was like I was so in awe because I couldn't even afford to buy those magazines, watch those movies, and he welcomed me into that world. And so um, with that, Oji, I miss you terribly, and thank you so much for your generosity and your, uh, your willingness to share, to share what you know in fashion, the way, the confidence that he gave us without really having to teach directly. That I can say is uh, I will always remember and I will never forget that um, I have become who I am because of Ochi Cordario. Thank you so much. It was a privilege to really know Ochi because um, we were family friends. I knew his family being neighbors and um, of course, I met Nang and his ates, and um, even met his mother. And we would have lunches together, and um, we would even, um, yeah, we would send food to one another. So that was the kind of relationship we would have. He was very close to my sister and Margie. That was the same time that uh, they were discovered, and. I really am so appreciative of what he did for my sister because he really took care of her. He would send her to, you know, to her fashion shoots in his car with a yaya. You know, he really did so much for her. And I would I will really remember Oji so much, you know, because of that, because of his kindness, his generosity. And yeah, so Oji, you will always be in our hearts forever. Yeah, thank you. Oji, I sit here pondering that day you picked me out of that Hyatt Hotel model lineup and you invited me to your atelier in Mabini Street, where from that day onward, I was in your atelier every single day after the Hyatt show and you would fill my 16-year-old mind with dreams of being an international model, where with encyclopedic knowledge, you schooled me about every fashion house and fashion designer, where in with awe, deepest admiration and respect, I listened to every word. I, I was, in my estimation, your best student. I know that there's a lot of women that you helped and all, but I definitely was your best student. I clung to your every word like it was the Bible. It is no secret that I would not be Anna Bailey without you, Oji Cordero. For almost 50 years, half a century, wow, Oji, I've listened to your voice telling me over and over again what to do without telling me directly what to do. You just gave me so much information from all the things you read in books and magazines and watched on TV that you've provided. And with that, you drew so much of the landscape or the lay of the land so that I can make all the decisions of my life 
not only about fashion, with your wisdom. You were a parent to me in that way, and I thank you. I have so much gratitude for everything that you have taught me, how you taught me to value my self-worth, when you took my clothes off your fashion show and sat me in your VIP table when I was blacklisted from your show. You taught me how to give the right people the love and attention that is due them. You taught me to be deliberate and choosy with who to give interviews and my attention to. You orchestrated so many things for me, like my writing for the newspapers and magazines so I can become a better writer. I have so much gratitude for everything you have given to me. I remember being in New York with you and you saw that I didn't have the appropriate clothes for my Manhattan Gosies, and you, you bought a beautiful white ensemble for me at Bloomingdale's that I treasured forever. I have so much gratitude for everything you've done for me, for making me stay with you at Patrick Ford's house on East 72nd Street, while you were on holiday in New York City, and where I ended up being given my own apartment to rent in just two weeks of my arrival in New York City, because I was the only girl in a household of full of gay people. This is really where my quest for stardom began when I arrived in New York with nothing but a dream and you. But when I sit here and really think, Oji, of the biggest gift you have given me, I realize it's, it wasn't all that. The gift you gave me was the gift of being alone. In you, I, I saw a person who was always alone, wrapped and engrossed with your books, your magazines, your thoughts, and your art. You always told me how Yves Saint Laurent was a hermit, a loner, that he used his pain to make the most beautiful garments. That is how I saw you, Oji. I saw how the solitude and the pain gave you your art. And though there's so much laughter in your dealings with your friends and clients, I also saw the beauty of how your pain and quiet suffering is transformed into your work and your artistry. Women love you because you made them beautiful. As for me, working with Monsieur Saint Laurent, you were like him, not as fragile, no, but so very loved by everyone around him. If I never told you, I'm saying it now, you were the Yves Saint Laurent of the Philippines. I should know, I work with all of them. You're a master in your own right, and I, I along with hundreds of women you dress, love you. From you, Oji, I learned to be alone, like you showed me by example over the years. I have learned to transform my own pain and suffering into something beautiful. And if I'm living a beautiful life now, it's because of the wisdom of your words and what I learned from you and this gift. And for that, I'm truly thankful and have and is I'm so full of gratitude. On a lighter note, Oji, I'm also grateful for how kind you have been to all my boyfriends and thankful that you never ever betrayed my dalliances. I just have to suffer your raised eyebrows. I know it's probably a disappointment to you because I was very stubborn and in your words, Malandi. I know you wanted me to marry a rich man. And about that, I know you're doubly raising your eyebrows now. Oji, I wanted you to come to visit me here in New York, in the country where, uh, now, where I now live. I have a room here for you so we can talk for hours like we used to, about so many more things, like my son, Callum. We can talk about growing old, writing a book, making a documentary, but we ran out of time because the angels wanted your company. No matter, I will be hearing your voice in my head berating me for the things I have still to do. Hoy, ikaho, isulat mo na yung libro mo. I would be hearing in the back of my head. 
Today, in your honor and in memory of the beautiful life you have lived, I promise you, Audrey, I will. I will finish writing that book. I always wanted you to be proud of me. I wanted to be worthy of all the dreams that you gave me. Thank you for this gift of being alone. I love you. Thank you. So maraming salamat sa inyo na tumulong, even with the food and all that, and also the tech staff who, most of them, not even born, all of them, when Oji was doing his career. Anyway, uh, Oji, I met Oji, uh, I'll make this short, kasi marami pang mag... I met Oji when, long before I entered uh, media. I was an intern in a hotel, trying to kill time, when uh, my mean boss asked me, there was a fashion show of Oji and Robert Castaneda, I think, and then those two designers were seated at the table, and then the boss said, look at yung, yung uh, damit nila, planchahin mo. So pinlancha ko yung damit ni Oji. So when I was becoming editor na, Oji said, alam ba nila na magaling kang mamlancha? <laughs> Pinaplancha mo lang ang damit ko ngay mo noon, tapos ngayon ini-interview mo na ako, ganon. And, um, well, of course, as being media, and uh, he became part of our lives. In, in my career, Oji never left. He was always there through the years. He was Google before there was even Google. He was uh, my moral compass, actually, in my career. And... To put it briefly, Oji was my life partner, in a way, because um, he influenced me in, my, in everything I, I did, even my kids. He was, there was not a portion of my life when he was not around from even before I got married. And uh, even now, so I wasn't, I, I thought he was just going for a checkup. So I really didn't know when, what to do when Rina one late night told me that, uh, of course, Rina was both hysterical and I think suspect drunk. So <laughs> she was saying that Oji's gone. So I, I couldn't believe it. So he didn't say really goodbye. And then Oji is to know that death, Oji, your death is just an inconvenient interruption of our relationship, but uh, let me thank you now, and the whole room is, and beyond, is thankful to you. Thank you, everyone. I'm so happy that you all turned up. Uh, this is really an honor, and I would like to thank everybody who came and uh, participated in this memorial. It really, it's, it really means a lot to us. Yep. And I want to uh, say a special thank you to Thelma. She worked so hard for this. And Ben too. And of course, Ben, he is a good friend of ours. I wish I could be there. I sure miss everybody. And this is pretty close. Yes, and we are really uh, full of gratitude to everybody. The tributes are all very nice, and it hits in the heart, you know. Been kind of sad around here for a while. We're getting over it slowly. You want to keep going or take your glasses off? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I want to uh, I want to to say that uh, I really miss name. I wish I could be there. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. Uh, Oji would really he would really have liked this memorial. It's really a nice celebration of life. A life well lived. Thank you very much.
You know, this R.G. Eves, we got along really good. I was stationed there at Clark Air Force Base, and he got wind of it that I was dating his sister. So he thought he'd better check me out. So he invited me and a friend down to Manila to, for lunch. And we went down there. I don't know how we found where the, where we were supposed to eat, but what a nice uh, afternoon we had. And then when I went back to work, and then he went back to work. Those were the old days. We visited the Philippines about, I think, five times or something like that. We stayed with him. We got along just great. The guy was super. Thank you very much, Audrey.